and it's exactly 8.30 time now for my banner. Well, today I am paying attention to the men. The men are our men. We've got to give them some time. Uh, so I'm paying attention to the men who are talking prostate cancer. Serious business on my banner today here on the AM show. My guest is Raphael Obu, and he's founder uh, of Men's Health Foundation Ghana. Good morning, good Raphael. Morning. Yeah, good morning. How big is the issue of prostate cancer? Yeah, um, the issue of prostate cancer in men is not supposed to be tolerated. with. A lot of men are actually battling with these, uh, disease. In the, um, in the UK, uh, close to about 40,000 men diagnosed with prostate cancer yearly, and out of that, 10,000 men died of prostate cancer. In Ghana, uh, according to statistics, uh, that was way back in 2012. It's estimated that close to 1,000 men diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. But however, Ghana, if you look at our st uh, data, statistics problems and all, is um, actually a calculated gamble to talk about 1,000. Because there are so many people living with uh, prostate problems, and especially prostate cancer. Mm. Yeah, and that actually statistics, you know, statistics could not even actually uh, pick them up. And eventually, many people with these problems actually ends up even in the herbal hospitals and prayer camps. So it's actually, um, in Ghana situation, it's actually difficult to talk, to rely on thousands. Mm. Because in the U.S., for instance, close to about 230,000 men diagnosed with prostate cancer yearly. And um, so it's actually a big, a big issue now mm. and uh, we have to talk about. So what is it, what is it, what, what is prostate cancer? What is That's it all right. about? Yes. Uh, many people actually get mixed up with the word prostate. Yeah, so sometimes you hear people saying prostate uh, cancer, but the word actually is pronounced prostate. prostate. Yeah, because it's from a Greek word which means prohistani, to stand in front. So you can say stand prostate. So, yeah, so that's the two, uh, two different things altogether. And um, prostate cancer, actually, the cause of prostate cancer, uh, according to research, is not well established, but there are some risk factors that can predispose a man to prostate cancer. Mm. There are about three key risk factors that can predispose a man to prostate cancer. One, age. Then two, uh, family history of the disease. Mm. And the third one is uh, race or ethnicity. Okay. Yes. So if you say age, is it when you are aging or when you are younger? That's right. Yeah. For me, I would say age is not actually the problem. Now, this is the problem. As we age, by the time a man you get to 40, 50 years, there is some key hormone there called testosterone. Now, what happens is that testosterone decline and pays way for one hormone called estrogen. Now, there is a warfare between testosterone and estrogen. Eventually, estrogen dis dispose of the main testosterone, and then there is a problem. This is very scientific. Uh, <laughs> if we want to avoid that's the right. scientific definition this, of this that's one, right. tell us, if, if a man has prostate it, cancer, yeah. what would he exhibit? Okay. Um, actually, the risk factors, let me just uh, talk about the risk. Mm. Uh, yeah, but prostate cancer is more peculiar to black men. Okay. And according to the Prostate Cancer UK, one in four black men will get prostate cancer. And it's, mm. it's a lot. Now, uh, some of, especially the warning signs, uh, if you have uh, this problem, one, you can experience what you call the agency of urination. Yes, you can urinate frequently during the daytime. And um, sometimes you can... Would it be painful? Yes, sometimes it can be painful, yes. And um, you can also experience what you call uh, uh, nocturia. That's uh, before you, before day breaks, you urinate more than uh, maybe five or ten times. Yes, it's before they break. They break, yes. And uh, some men also experience total uh, loss of libido. Yeah, because uh, the agency for sex drive is, is totally off because of the connection of the prostate yeah, with our sex life. And you can also experience um, uh, hesitancy when you want to pee. You hesitate to pee. And uh, some men. As too, in what? It will not come immediately? Yes, yes like uh, yes, you, hes you hesitate to, to urinate. And as some men, you can also experience the pressure of your urine, rather that the pressure it decreases. The way sometimes, you know, as a young man, when you realize you see the pressure, sometimes you can even play with the, the urine and you can even. You can yeah, direct it to yes, how far you yes, want it Yes, you to. want it to go. And, <laughs> and also, sometimes when you urine, rather that it splits into two. So, some of um, these are some of the warning signs, and especially when you get to the advanced stage, you can experience blood in the urine mm -hmm. and also uh, blood in your semen. And it means that when you start experiencing these warning signs, then it means that uh, 
is advanced stage cancer. Wow. But however, not all men with prostate cancer will experience symptoms because of where it originates. It's already from the a zone and it's far away from the, uh, we call it the, the urethra. When you want to pee, it's through a, a canal, we call it an organ from the urethra. In the same urethra, when you have sex, the water that comes out passes through there. Mm. So it's far away, unlike uh, men with living with enlarged prostates, that normally um, it can give them more pressure and it constricts the a, a zone called, we call it a transitional zone. So most of the symptoms, the warning signs, are results of enlarged prostate and not prostate cancer. So there's many people living with prostate cancer without symptoms. Mm. So with that said, are there stages? Yeah, there are stages of the cancer. Prostate cancer is in three forms. You can have what we call local prostate cancer. It means that um, it's just a confined region of the prostate capsules. And you can also, uh, under what we call it, locally advanced. Now you have the cancer, but it's uh, spread to the, just the nearby organs. And the third one, the the advanced one we call the metastatic stage. It means now, now the cancer is at the far stage and it's in, in, in the bones. And sometimes when you get there, you can even experience spinal compression. And when you get to that stage, it means that it's an advanced uh, prostate cancer. Mm. So maybe somebody is watching us right now and is thinking, this is very scary, yeah. but can I avoid getting it? Can I prevent it? That's right. In, to in, in terms of cancers, when I talk about prevention of uh, metals, it's actually um, a big issue. But um, they are according to because sometimes you can do everything right and then you still end up getting it. Yes, you see the whole thing is about uh, the changes, mutations in the DNA. You see, you can you can des you can have a family history of the disease, or you can live in a family where there are high incidence of let's say cancers. But um, you see, the whole gene facts, the whole gene facts is ridiculous. Lifestyle or diet can make a dormant gene more or less active. Mm. Yes. So most of these changes in the, the mutations in the DNA, yeah, diet or lifestyle can trigger. So sometimes you can do everything, but at the end you realize that, hey, why me? Yeah, so it's actually um, a serious thing. But according to the Prostate Cancer UK, uh, for men with prostate cancer, uh, if you drink more of green tea, green tea can lower your... Green tea? Green what is tea. green tea? Yes, it's just like um, a tea, like a tea leaves, it, mm -hmm. like a tea bag. Yeah, so you drink it. But it's yeah. green? Yeah, it's green. Yeah, okay. it takes its source from the, the leaves from green, so it's called green tea. And even there's another tea is called even the hibiscus tea and white tea. These mm. are all good teas. And that's why most of the time the Asia countries cancer incidence is very... Okay, because I was going to say that these type of teas, don't they come from China? Yes, from China. And that's why most of the time cancer incidence is uh, very low in these Asia ca countries. Mm. Yes, and most of the time too, they are on natural foods and organic foods. And, and that's why most of the time we have a problem. We have a bigger issue because the environment also could act as a, a risk factor. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So... You know, say you have it. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, can you live with it forever? Yes, there are so many survivors. I actually, there's um, I I know of a man. Uh, he's even one of the committee champion of prostate cancer in the UK now. Mm. Yeah, he runs the he's the director of prostate cancer awareness, and he's a volunteer for prostate cancer UK. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer at the age of forty, and now he's sixty four. Mm. Yeah, he's so a survivor. With it yes. For some 24 years. Yes. So it's early detection. Normally, when it's seen early, then you are okay. But when you get to the bones, it's difficult. Okay. So it's, if you say early detection, detection yeah. then what sort of state should you yes. find it in? Yes. That's why, even uh, with Men's Health Foundation, what we are trying, trying to do is that even organizations, corporate institutions, uh, they can make Men's Health a priority. Men 40 years, 35 years and above, can they can start uh, talking about prostate cancer screening? But actually, when we talk about prostate cancer screening, it's actually a bigger uh, issue because one of the uh, screening tests, a PSA, we use for this screen is actually a controversial test. It's actually a controversial test because uh, uh, you can go in for the PSA test and it might prove negative, but you may have the cancer. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's why in the UK now, there's a whole policy on prostate cancer screening because they realize that about 90% of the screening proves uh, 
uh, negative and rather it creates panic and fear rather than yeah for the people and proves like some of, some, most of the time there's over diagnosis and over treatments after the screening mm. so there's a whole policy uh, regarding prostate cancer uh, screening in mm. the in the UK we don't have any such thing in Ghana no no what's no, no, our no. direction though yeah uh, that's why for the past um, years now men's health foundation um, we trumpet on prostate cancer uh, policy in Ghana and not actually on prostate cancer uh, policy but cancer in general because you look at the UK the Macmillan Cancer Society they have so many even uh, the patient pathway journey is also another thing because uh, cancer actually the diagnosis of cancer is not a death sentence that's what people must know because in the advanced world in the UK for instance we have uh, support there are support groups so eventually if you're diagnosed but in Ghana, do we have support groups no we don't actually have this support so what do we have? so what we actually men's health and that's the new team men's health foundation Ghana we've just introduced it's a prostate cancer support group where men can come there and provide the relevant information regarding prostate cancer treatment options in, in Ghana so uh, we provide a whole lot with especially with the cancer psychology services and that is what Ghana as a country now with um, this cancer incidents, we must start looking at policies, national policies, national policies, support groups, creating our support groups so that we can help the majority of the people living with cancers, mm. not only necessarily prostate cancer. Okay. So let me ask you, if you're diagnosed, yeah. can you can it be cured? Yes. The early if you seen the early stages. As in complete. Yeah. Yes. With this management treatment, yeah, we talk about so when I talk about treatment, we like to talk about management because it can be managed because there are so many people who yeah, are diagnosed with prostate cancer and they are living it. So we talk about management because actually in the UK, you see, the treatment or the management of prostate cancer depends upon the stage of the cancer. Because the stage of the cancer is also very important here. W would the UK model, yeah. would the UK model be the same model that oh, yes, we will live the, on? The management is the same because if you are in stage one, Stage one, we have treatment options like um, uh, active surveillance, where uh, what happens is that it's your doctor that monitors the progress of your cancer. Mm. But however, I have a problem with active surveillance approach towards prostate cancer management. Because in one of my papers for my master's in prostate cancer, Sheffield, I criticized the role and safety of active surveillance for the management of prostate cancer. Because prostate cancer is more peculiar to black men. Mm. And it's a well-established risk factor. And according to uh, Dr. Shufe, his, his a urologist, one of the research they did was that black men on prost a and ASI treatment or active surveillance management actually ends up getting aggressive prostate cancer. No, if you say active surveillance management, yes. what does it entail? Yes, active surveillance, what it means that is it we have two approach. One, we call it watchful waiting. For watchful waiting, you, the patient, you have to be proactive about your, your state. But with active surveillance, it means that the doctor mm -hmm. will monitor the progress of your, your prostate cancer with some other laboratory investigations and uh, some med okay. yes, tests. Okay. Yeah, because uh, it's an early stage. Mm. It's one of the approach for the early stage prostate cancer. But because despite the fact that it's an early stage cancer, that's not obvious that you can have uh, it will not progress into an aggressive mm, okay, cancer okay. because there's no you. treatment option. No treat. It's not uh, no active or robotic measures is taken out. Someone with maybe someone using, let's say, uh, a radiotherapy to kill the cells. Mm. So, so what, what's your proposal? I mean, for a typical black man, and we are black people. That's if right. you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, yes. what's the solution? It's the solution, uh, if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer as a black man you must always see your, the cancer team. But eventually, you see, uh, the cancer team is made up of a whole uh, multidisciplinary team. We call mm. it the MDT approach, where you have radiation oncologists, we have urology. It's a whole team. Do we have all that in Ghana? Yes, here it's actually uh, difficult when you talk about a whole MDT approach. Because even, um, for instance, in the Macmillan voice, what they do is that they can, there's even a complementary Experts, therapy experts. So you have your urologist, you have your cancer this, you have this, uh, this. So there's always job description. Mm. So from here you move on to yeah. here. From here you move on to here. But, but we, we yeah, uh, we don't have it exactly exa like that. Yeah, but we do a, have something, don't we? Yeah, we do. We have the urologist. We have the, the uh, 
medical uh, oncologies, we have this, and you must see them. But eventually, one um, critical problem we have here is also where our herbal uh, centers are not actually regulated very well mm. because there's no uh, borderline and there's no um, actually what herbalists have to know is that you see the enlarged prostate there are three conditions that affect the prostate gland you can have an enlarged prostate but it's not prostate cancer you can even have an prostatitis an inflammation of the prostate but however because you see the symptoms are almost the same yes if you go to a herbal hospital you know you'll be given a, a solution and eventually the symptoms improve and you may think mm. that you have yeah, this treatment for prostate mm. cancer okay. but it's, we okay. call it a placebo effect it's a false placing mm. and eventually if you look at uh, one of the uh, my work I did on evaluation of the factors I talk about over dependence and reliance on herbal remedies it can even one of the uh, most of the factors that can even predispose or cause the mortality and poor survival and quality of life of yeah, black men and Ghanaian men because one prostate cancer links with our sex drives our sexual life yeah and, 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 and I have heard that yeah if you're treated then you cannot perform sexually the way you used to yeah but there are some support systems available supposed to like how yes like there what? are some medications uh, there are some medications to support that, you to be able to perform oh yes even in the, in the UK the advanced world they can even give you an injection yeah I mean anytime. you're talking about advanced world but I like to talk about <laughs> yes, Ghana yes. so here for instance there are some medications still so there are medications that you can use and the doctors doctors will actually prescribe some medication mm. for you to help you to have sex because the whole treatment options affect our sexual performance mm. so even sometimes some of the nerves can get damaged and it can even go off it can go light off and even some if you're not careful like it's just a form of castration yes so most of the time you know black men and uh, with sex issues and yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes. sex is very important in, That's in right. every person's <laughs> life. I mean, people yeah. who are in that position... Yes to yes. do it so yes. if you cannot perform then that's a big deal <laughs> well yes and that's why um uh, but all the treatment options mm. yes affect your sex drive so, so if, if 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 you had it could you transfer it to someone else no it's not a sexually transmitted prostate mm. cancer is not a sexually transmitted but can you give it to your child well it's as i told about the risk factors you cannot give it to your child but can, genetic you can inherit from the family mm. if it's a, f a family uh, familiar history of the disease mm. but that doesn't mean that uh, once you have prostate cancer you can pass as a se sexually transmitted disease yeah. it, it's actually different bulky more together mm. can we cost the treatments do we know how expensive it well, will be for brachytherapy I know it calls uh, out yes using um, x-rays radiation to kill this the cells mm. yeah and actually it's in four, two forms some you can have an internal brachy or external it depends on which one and actually if you look at it it costs between about nine thousand euros wow yeah nine thousand that's a lot no. of Ghana cities yeah nine thousand can cost you mm. between nine thousand euros to do even brachytherapy mm. in Ghana okay but I'm told that the men's health foundation has a screening center where people can screen for free yes we do have one at Dodua is that the only center we have in Ghana though? That's right, for free. Yeah, that's the only center where we provide a whole pack you know, based on the prostate cancer uh, management program, the PCRMP. And then in last year, the Melbourne Consensus Statement on Prostate Cancer Screening was uh, provided in Melbourne where there was a whole guidelines. And um, if you look at one of the guidelines, the statement number three, which actually talks about accessing the prostate volumes where you use the ultrasound to scan mm. the prostate yeah to look at the size of the prostate because the PSA test is not reliable okay so yeah. this new reliable you know testing system we do have in Ghana do we yeah we have so men can actually even now uh, with your PSA at the same time and you must also do the ultrasound okay. of the prostate so okay. that uh, even if the PSA is, uh, it proves negative the ultrasound can say okay well there's a problem then you take it further and your mm. doctors or your, your team your urologist will look at it and they say okay well maybe well the size of the prostate is this this okay what do we do next that's okay. part of father the PSA takes uh, proves negative so how we often must one do the do, screen yeah, for black men for black men twice a year twice a year is, is, is ideal so if you can do it even 
every six months. Mm. Yes, every six months because uh, the ultrasound is also another thing because in some areas it even costs less about 50 CDs to do the ultrasound. But Men's Health Foundation, we do this thing for free. Mm. Yeah, Can I ask you why you're doing it for free? I mean, is it because you have so much money you don't you don't need? <laughs> That's right. Or you're being funded <laughs> by some special group? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And um, eventually, I, being a young man, I, I when I started this project then I've seen so many people you know my father's uncles and brothers yes actually suffered this kind of prostate cancer mm -hmm. problem and that actually even you know, motivated me as a well let me actually look at the whole thing so eventually after my first program in medical sonography I work for our two herbal hospitals in this country and I can see the number of people men that troops into these centers just for the sake of their prostate solutions mm. so that transformed my decision to look at what well, what should be done because I realized that prostate cancer is managed by you have to be a urologist before you can even talk about and prostate. that's a very very special area because area. even in the whole of the yes. of our country we yes. have very few, few urologists exactly. so eventually so I was like wow so a man told me the way you are so passionate about this why what can't you do something so eventually uh, I had an unconditional offer by prostate care um, Sheffield Harlem University to do my master's in prostate mm. cancer and it was one of the few programs okay. in prostate cancer so that actually transform my decision mm. and actually the first model in prostate cancer transform and my course leaders my course director Catherine Holborn and co they were very 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 supportive in mm. this project and especially with the prostate cancer UK project on Afro Caribbean's work okay. and that was why I started this project mm. so you work for yourself then? yes I, I do okay. work for myself and uh, move on to most of the time uh, churches Okay. advocating for change because I believe men deserves better men will deserve better treatment mm -hmm. and the, the women must also uh, we have a campaign running called stand by your man no, well, stand by your man. I'll right. stand by you. <laughs> what do you want me to do? That's right. When your your man diagnosed with prostate cancer, you must stand by him okay. because it affects the sex drive. Okay. And you the woman too now, what you can also do with that is it what you feed your man will determine his state of the prostate mm. after forty, fifty years. Okay. So whether he sleeps on duty or not. It depends on when you ah, get woman. <laughs> I see where you're going. That's right. But thank you so much and yeah. I'm proud of the fact that you are young graduates yeah. and you're doing something for yourself. You're not selfish. You're doing it to help the whole society. Yeah. So thank you so much for the education and keep up the good work. All right, thank okay. you. Okay, and I like the Stand By Your Man campaign. That's right. I think you should come back <laughs> some other time and tell us more. So Stand By Your Man, uh, no matter the condition that he finds himself in, especially if he's diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. Uh, this has been my banner. Stay with us right here on the AM Show.